Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about a new article that was released. It's an article from Entertainment Weekly talking with Eric Wallace, the showrunner of The Flash, obviously. And so there is lots of interesting answers in this article, so I'm going to leave it in the link in the description below so you can check it out after you've watched this video. So for now, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so the first question that is asked, and all of this is in regards to The Flash returning because this article came out just the other week, so obviously last Wednesday because The Flash has changed dates to a Wednesday, and in a day's time we're going to be getting episode 7, which is the next episode. Superman Lois isn't on tonight, so don't be expecting any new Superman Lois content. However, we'll continue to make videos about Superman Lois if anything interesting comes out, or if there are any interesting theories that you guys have. If you want to participate in a Q&A video, all you need to do is go to the community tab on my channel, and you click on it, and then you can type in any questions that you have. If they're good, you will be included in a future video. And so I'm just saying that in regards to Superman Lois, considering that it isn't on right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this interview. So this is the first question coming from Entertainment Weekly. They say, as we move into the next graphic novel, how would you describe the tone and themes of season eight? So Eric Wallace, the showrunner of The Flash, replies, I would say tonally it is very intense. Perhaps one of the most intense seasons we've had in a while. I would say the first couple episodes after Armageddon, one of which you just saw, are designed to be interludes that are a little lighter, and they're designed that way on purpose because the next graphic novel of the season starts in a few more episodes. It's going to be very hardcore for Team Flash. We have a lot of things to explore emotionally, especially in Barry and Iris' relationship with Iris' time sickness, with Caitlyn's decision to start dating again that we introduce in Armageddon, also Chester and Allegra, we saw them kissing in the future. What does it mean? Do we have to explore a little bit of that this season and how do they eventually get there? Do they get there? Is something standing in the way of them getting there so it does get very emotionally intense especially in the middle of season 8 very much so so this is interesting this is me talking here in regards to Eric Wallace's comments so the interlude episodes as we saw last week and probably in tomorrow's episode with the return of Goldface oh my god like I still can't believe that's happening it's clear that it's going to be very light in terms of you know the stakes and the humor it's not going to be very dark at all. Although it may seem a little bit weird that they're going kind of very kooky, it does make sense if this is designed this way and Eric Wallace has made it pretty clear that the interludes are supposed to be like mini breaks to kind of cleanse the palette between villains especially. But going into the next graphic novel, we're going to see Barry and Iris' relationship go through a lot, especially in regards to Iris dealing with her time sickness. That is something that we're finally figuring out more about. It's been a long time since we had any sort of explanation, so you're going to see the return of Dion once again because he is heavily involved in Iris's time sickness. And there was some set photos the other day in the episode that Eric Wallace is going to be directing. Dion shows up in that, and I think he shows up in a couple more episodes as well this season. So apparently it's going to get very hardcore for Team Flash in general because of what they are about to face. And then personally you have Caitlyn who's going to be dating again. That's going to be kind of linked to maybe Ronnie returning. And I don't know who she's going to be specifically dating, but they kind of introduced that idea in Armageddon a little bit. Also, Chester and Allegra is something that they set up in Armageddon, and that is going to be continued in the next couple of episodes. I don't know when exactly we're going to see anything actually happen, but they're obviously leading towards some sort of relationship between them, because in the future, they actually happen. And so there's always a chance that in the past, they're going to happen, and so... They're definitely pushing for this, or at least Eric Wallace is definitely pushing for this. Let's move on to the next question. So, EW asks, Do you think the intensity level is comparable to previous seasons? I would say, season 2 or 3, Eric Wallace says, but it's such a different feeling because the villain of the middle graphic novel is so different. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that the villain is not a speedster, 
but it kind of reminded me a little bit of the emotions of season two and season three of that kind of intensity. So that I think is a pretty apt comparison. So there we go, we have official confirmation that the next big villain, so basically the way that Eric Wallace is organizing this season is the first villain was Despero and Reverse Flash with Armageddon and now what he's talking about the middle graphic novel is what we're going to get next after these interlude episodes. That villain is not going to be a speedster, however he says it's going to get dark and he says it's comparable to season 2 or 3. So after these interlude episodes it's supposed to get pretty dark and then for the final graphic novel of the season which is probably like the last 5 episodes I'm going to guess only because Godspeed was like 5 episodes at the end of last season as well. We don't know about that person yet but that's going to be a completely different villain who could be a speedster because I don't think he's really commented on that as of right now but yeah this next villain is going to be not a speedster, it could be Cobalt Blue considering that we know Eddie Thorne is showing up in at least two more episodes or so after the interlude episodes, so there is always the chance that he could be the main villain. And it's interesting that he compares it to season 2 or 3 because if you look at season 2 or 3 there's not many like super fun episodes or like fun moments, obviously there's nice moments, but with the interlude episodes in every season and the fact that they're making them so light, I really wouldn't say that this season or any season that Eric Wallace has done in the graphic novel format will ever be like season 2 or 3 because the structure is so different. Because you have to remember with season 2 and 3, we've had one villain throughout the entire season. Here, this season, we're getting three villains. We had Armageddon, we have the next villain, and we have the final villain before the season ends. So obviously you have less time to become attached to those villains, and you have less time to see those plans actually come to fruition. And so naturally, there is always the chance that we're going to be a bit less connected to these villains because their stories are on for a much shorter period of time. And with the interlude episodes, I just don't think you can kind of compare it, but I get it that he's comparing like the middle part of this season to those seasons. That makes sense. The next question is this, season 3 makes sense given that Barry was trying to save Iris from being murdered in the future and here he's dealing with her time sickness which has been dangling since season 7. How quickly can we expect to get answers about that? Eric Wallace replies, it will take centre stage by the middle of season 8. So I don't know exactly how many episodes we're going to get of the season. I would presume it's like maybe 18 episodes like last season. So if we say middle episode, that's going to be about episode 9. Currently we're going to be heading into episode 7, which is tomorrow's episode, which is another interlude episode. And then really episode 9 is kind of your midway point, and that's the point where we're going to get fully into this new villain, or at least be introduced to him because we are running out of episodes really as we head towards the end of the season. And Eric Wallace goes on to say, we're writing the season finale as we speak and I'm happy to report that it all gets resolved by the end of season 8 so we can start fresh and clean should we knock on wood be able to have the privilege of doing a season 9. So yeah, that's confirmation. Iris's time sickness is going to be resolved. I mean, that's kind of a spoiler really, so I don't know if that should have actually been said. But they are writing the season finale as they speak and they've resolved a lot of this stuff and obviously they're working on how to defeat the final villain of the season and obviously there's no teasers as to who that character is but let's move on to the next question so since the show hasn't been renewed yet are you writing the finale as a season or series finale or some kind of hybrid so eric wallace replies i have to do both i've known what the ending was for a few years now we're coming to the end of a three year master plan that I've had with the show at season six, seven and eight, but the actual ending ending, I have to write two endings because I don't know what the future holds. I know what I'm hoping for. I'm very hopeful that there is a season nine, but I have to make sure I have closure on all of the character arcs depending on the way it goes. But then I also have to film a tag or teaser that potentially sets up another year, so it's a challenge, but it's one of those things we love doing as writers. 
it's made it even more interesting and more intense, but I think it's going to be worth it. So this is a really interesting question and a great answer because we get a lot of insights as to what he's actually thinking about right now in regards to The Flash potentially ending. So it's clear that Eric Wallace wants a season 9 and apparently he's had this kind of three year master plan which heavily involves the use of the graphic novel format. So with season 8 ending, are we going to be going into a season 9 where it's drastically different? Are we going to go away from the graphic novel format? I would personally hope we are, because I like the seasons where we have like one villain. But I'm going to predict that it's unlikely if we get a season 9 that we're not going to have the graphic novel format because Eric Wallace seems to think that it's very good and it works and so I don't see him giving up on that. But in regards to what else he said in his answer, he says I have to write two endings because I don't know what the future holds. And so he also has to film a tag or a teaser that potentially sets up another year whilst also having the option to cut that tag or teaser if season 8 turns out to be the final season of The Flash. So this is very curious because he's obviously writing these two endings. He's writing a series finale ending to wrap up all the character arcs that he set up over the last couple years, but he's also filming a season finale that could potentially have a cliffhanger that will lead on to a season 9 if season 9 happens. And so that is a curious idea because I feel like the CW and the people behind the show should try and at least tell the showrunner of are they going to get renewed or not? Is Grant going to stick around or not? Before they get to writing the season finale because they really don't know what to expect. So if I'm going to be honest, I think it's a bit strange. However, I guess that's just how the TV world works. Let's move on to the next question. EW writes, Barry Allen is supposedly the fastest he's ever been. What can we expect from the big bad in season 8's next graphic novel? So Eric Wallace says this. Despero is a perfect example of if you're going to make the Flash stronger, you have to make the villains even stronger than your leveled up hero. That's the theme that plays out through the remainder of the season. And remember, all of the strength and speed in the world can't help protect Barry from emotional disasters because heroes are still human beings and if you love, you have a vulnerability and that's the people you care for and the villains he faces, especially the ones in the middle of season 8, are going to exploit that to an incredibly devastating effect. And obviously that's going to tie back into Iris's time sickness, what is going on, why is this happening and more importantly why is it happening right now. So this is interesting what Eric is saying in regards to the next big bad of the season in the middle graphic novel. So they are going to be exploiting Barry's personal connections. It seems it's heavily linked to Iris, but it's also going to seemingly extend further beyond just Barry and Iris being affected, but to all of his emotional connections to the people surrounding him. And so it seems this villain that we're going to be having is going to heavily exploit that. And that's why I really do think that it could be Eddie Thorne as a different character, like an alternate Eddie, maybe as Cobalt Blue or as maybe some other villain. But I do think that personal connection between Eddie with Barry and Iris is definitely a good reason to suspect Eddie as maybe the next villain. Let's move on. So EW says this, you said villains, does that mean we're dealing with multiple big bads? Eric says no, it means we're dealing with something different this year. Instead of just two graphic novels, we are having three, so Armageddon was the first. Then we have a few interlude episodes, right? Then eventually we will go into our second graphic novel that has its own big bad and then we will have again a couple of interlude episodes and then we're going to do something new. So you get more villains this season, more, more, more than ever. So I again stick with my standpoint that I don't think more is better. I think less is better in terms of villains because we get more time with them. And it's clear that this middle graphic novel, let's say it starts maybe episode 8 or 9, we're probably going to go like 4 or 5 episodes. And so say we have 5 episodes from episode 9, say the second graphic novel finishes with episode 14 let's say, then we have maybe, I don't know how many episodes left, like if we have only 18 episodes in the season and we have five episodes for the middle graphic novel. We actually don't have time for interlude episodes if we only have four episodes left after that if it counts up to 18 episodes. But that is all me assuming we have 18. 
if we actually have 20 episodes this season, that would make sense because you could have two interlude episodes, so episode 15 and 16, and then go 17, 18, 19, 20, and have four episodes at the end with a new villain. And that technically works, but like I said before, I do think it's pushing it very, very hard to have more interlude episodes between these two different villains, considering that right now, we are having another interlude episode, which is going to be tomorrow night's episode, which is episode 7, and then we have maybe one more episode, and then we go on to episode 9, which is like technically the middle of the season, roughly, and that's when we'll start getting into this second graphic novel. So, I don't know if I'm going crazy or something, but even if we have 20 episodes instead of 18 episodes, it all seems to be very tight, and it doesn't look like there's going to be much time to actually explore these villains. But if you take away the extra interlude episodes, I think there is the possibility that you have more time to connect with them, but that's not going to happen. Let's move on to the next question, so Entertainment Weekly asks, as you mentioned, Caitlyn starts dating again this season, is it fair to assume Robbie and Mel and his return ties into that? This is what Eric Wallace answers, it does, it definitely does because what's more inconvenient as you are starting to date than having your ex-husband show up? So that's confirmation that we're going to see him in present day and he's going to be returning somehow back alive with Caitlyn in the middle of starting to date someone new. So that's definitely going to be very awkward, but I think the big question is like, how the hell does he show up if he is not around? Eric Wallace goes on to say, I mean, part of that is actually very funny. It's very comedic. I'm not saying it's the funniest storyline, so please don't get me wrong because it's not. It's obviously very dramatic and intense, but it isn't a coincidence that she starts to date and Robbie Amell is guest starring on our show. It's part of the complicated journey that she's going to go on to really find out who she is at her core because that's what we really wanted to ask this season. Who is Caitlyn? Oh, she's a doctor. Well, does that really define her? Okay, she's a member of Team Flash, but does that really define her? So who is she really? That's what we'll get to know in the middle of Season 8. Then he goes on to praise Danielle's performance this season because obviously she's playing Killer Frost and also she's playing Caitlyn at the same time, so she's doing double duty as usual. But it's interesting that he says Robbie and Mel showing up as Ronnie is going to be comedic. And I get it that it's kind of comic timing that she is starting to date people and starting to kind of move on and that's when he shows up again. So I'm hoping what Eric is actually saying is more in regards to, oh, it's funny that he shows up at this point rather than it being like a funny situation that they get into, like if the show treats it all as a kind of joke. But he seems to reiterate that this isn't like the funniest storyline, but it's also very dramatic and intense, but it just so happens to be at the same time when this is all going down. Okay, let's move on. So, Legends of Tomorrow star Katie Lotz just announced she's directing an episode. What can we expect from her episode? Eric says, it's interesting that we have three kind of interlude episodes. So there we go. That is three episodes actually coming up after the second graphic novel. So I really don't know how many episodes we're gonna get with that last villain. Like, unless they go to 22 episodes this season, I really don't know how they're going to have any time. But anyway, so it's me directing, that being Eric Wallace, Katie and Danielle Panabaker, all three in a row. So we kind of just joked about how hilarious this was, all three of us doing our episodes back to back. And it spoils the cast in a sense, because we all know them so well. So that's just a thing that's happening. It happens more and more recently that stars from other shows end up directing some of the other shows. So... Good to see Katie step into the flash. So let's move on. EW asks a final question and they ask, you've directed in the past, but how did your directorial debut on the flash go? And so this is what Eric Wallace says. It just brought us all closer together and quite frankly, it was an enormous amount of fun. I think on the last day, Grant and I were busy laughing as we were shooting this final scene. And I said to him, you know, I'm going to do this again, right? He was like, of course, yes, bring it on because we're just having such a great time. I think I gave myself what I would call, quote unquote, the weird episode. And it's really funny because I wasn't supposed to direct this weird one. I was actually supposed to do the one before it, which is more emotional and 
more kind of not traditional but more of what you would expect from the flash week to week and because of scheduling and because of the holidays and all these types of things it started to become very clear that I'm going to have to do the weird one and he just embraced that so I don't know what he means by a weird episode but I presume it's going to be something akin to what we saw last week or what we're going to see tomorrow night with the return of Goldface they are very quirky episodes, seeing like strange villains who obviously can't be taken very seriously. I'm going to guess that this is another situation like this where maybe they've got some other villain from the past who is very kooky and they just want to have fun with it for these interlude episodes. But I really do want to get some form of clarification about how many episodes do we have this season, what episodes are the interlude ones, and what episodes are we actually going to have the main graphic novels because as I explained earlier we are really running out of time and I really doubt that we're going to have even five episodes for that last graphic novel unless we hit 22 episodes this season which I don't think we're gonna have I think it'll be like 20 episodes max but that about does it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching sorry that this has been a bit of a longer video but there was a lot to break down throughout this entire interview with Eric Wallace there was lots of interesting topics and ideas that he brought up about what's going to be happening next in season 8 but for now if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos also, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see